out and touch the Lord as He passes by. You find He's not too busy to hear your cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out. Tonight, let's open our Bibles to the Old Testament book of Psalms. We're going to look at Psalms 42 and 43 tonight. They are listed in uh, our Bibles as two different Psalms, but many of the Hebrew manuscripts have them as one song. Remember, these Psalms are songs. And uh, to me, the theme for these two uh, are so important. They are found in the last verse of each one. And that's why I've entitled this message, The Cure for Depression. The Cure for Depression. We're going to talk about depression, being discouraged, being uh, sad, and uh, what's the answer? And, uh, Praise uh, the Lord. Yes, I think you've already got the bottom line of that. Why don't you open us in prayer? Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord. So many people have gotten depressed through the last couple years, Lord, and you have gotten us through. But with the praising and the pray and prayer time and singing to the Lord, and uh, I've been strengthened in my faith, and the last two years have probably been better um, even though we've gone through this, they've been great because we've had you. And even through sadness and hardship, Lord, you've carried us and lifted us up because that's what your word does. So, Father, tonight we ask that as people listen to Pastor Jerry uh, preach the word of God tonight, that, Lord, they would be encouraged and they would know that this is where we go. We don't go to a bottle of medicine all the time. And, Father... We just ask that this will be our bottle of medicine tonight. Help those who are listening to know the medication is in the Word. And we thank you and praise you for that, Father. And I'm not totally against medicine, but this is my first line. And we thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. Amen and amen. One of the booklets we have on our website and also here in the church is called God's Medicine Cabinet. And it's filled with scriptures on healing. Amen. God's word for healing. So let's read Psalm 42, and uh, it's 11 verses. We'll comment on that, and then uh, we'll try to get to Psalm 43. As the deer pants for the water, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Amen. Now, it says uh, that this is to the chief musician, it doesn't say that it's by David. We don't know that it is by David. This is starting in the second book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 42 through 72. But to me, honey, it has the flavor of David. Definitely. Uh, talking about going to the temple and, and then not being able to go and, 
and uh, the way he's cast down. Remember David had a, he had a very artistic temperament, if we can call it that, very emotional. And um, in any event, it's not, the important thing is that it was written and that it's for us and it's ours. And let's go back to verse 1. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O my God. We'll be singing that song uh, next week, uh, as the deer pants for the water brooks. So the deer is thirsty and wants that water. All living animals and humans do. And so we should have that thirst for God. So my soul is panting for you, O God. When there's adversity, are we panting for God? When COVID was uh, just ruling this world for the last two years and still has a very strong effect, has there been an increase in people panting for God, hungering for God? I'm not a judge of the world. I have not seen any real evidence of it myself. I hope there has been, but to me, there really hasn't been that much of an increase in faith, an increase in medicines, vaccinations, masks, all that sort of thing. Boosters. Did you have your 45 shots and your 55 boosters and your 3,600? I've lost count of what it's all about. We trust in that. Do we trust in God? Oh, Lord, I pant for you. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Is, well, our, they, is our soul people thirsting? Want, people, a lot of people want something else. Yeah. So they, they can't, they don't have their... Um, and we're not beating people up that choose that. Um, but I think, you know, people get afraid. So I know. They get afraid, and so, yeah. you know. The most effective protection against COVID is the vaccine. So many think. Whatever happened to the natural, beautiful immune system God gave us? What about going to God and thanking Him for the immunity that He has given us and trusting in that immunity? Why don't we do that? And so, Lord, we need to pant for you a lot more. I know I do. We all do. Sure. We need to thirst for God more. <gasps> I thirst for the CDC. I thirst for the FDA. I thirst for the president. I thirst for the... Let's thirst for God. Let's thirst for him. To I think it's a consequence of technology. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're reading technology instead of the word. That's right. When, like in the 50s and the 40s, they, this was a common thing to read in your house. Yeah. So, and they had, you know, two shows on TV at night. So yeah. there wasn't all that coming into your home. And in fairness to the congregation, it starts in the pulpit. The pulpit's not talking about healing for the most part. Why would the congregation pick that up unless they pick it up on their own? So, Lord, help us to return to you and look to you as our healer. Uh, not to mankind and not to medicine, but to you as our healer. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, where is your God? He was being constantly challenged, where is your God? And he was crying and his tears had become his food. He was crying because of adversities and problems. This, this to me speaks of David and all the adversity that he was going through. The trouble with all the different nations going against him, Saul, the king going against him, his own son Absalom going against him. And uh, he just uh, was constantly in tears. He had so many uh, adversities that uh, were coming against him. When I remember these things, I poured out my soul within me, for I used to go with a multitude. He remembered the uh, adversity that he had. He remembered God. And he began to talk to himself. I pour out my soul within me. I began to talk to myself and to evaluate what's going on here, self. I used to go with a multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. You know, as he began to remember the old days, he remembered that yes, there was adversity, but he was going to church. He was going to the house of God. He was lifting up his voice of joy and praise. And uh, with the multitude, he was having a pilgrim feast. He was fellowshipping. And so when you and I are having our trouble, think about praise and worship. Think about the biggest attack that the church has had uh, as far as COVID's concerned. Can't go to church. Can't go to church. You need to get back to church. Some of you, some of you mm -hmm. are still not back to church. Some will never go back to church. 
And so the devil did this very, very cleverly. Very you, clever. You can talk about a plan, and I was discussing with someone before service about the, it's this now believed by many to be this a man-made virus, part of which uh, is uh, nice has a patent by it by Moderna, has a patent on part of the virus, and uh, that's interesting. And um, so uh, we remember the uh, the fact that it was all shut down, couldn't go to church, and even now you really can't give each other a hug and you really can't uh, have a feast and what have you. How devilish is that? And so he's remembering that, uh, you know, I had joy when I went to the house of God. I had joy when I went to church. And yes, I want to praise God, but it's great to praise with others, to be able to get together and, and sing with others. And, uh, but you well, notice what happens. The devil gets in there. You know, well, you can sing, but you've got to have your mask on. Or you can sing, but you're going to have to sit. You can sing, but you've got to be six feet apart. And so we're bound. We're bound. Th think about that. Though. It's, it's now devil you're telling me the mask is not worth anything at all. Think about yeah. it. It's devilish. But I'll wear the mask to bed. I'll wear the mask in the shower. I'll wear the mask, on, mask under the covers. And so we're just so afraid. We've become very pathetic. Mankind has become, <laughs> we are very laughable. The Is that what you had on the <laughs> other night, turned over and I saw that mask? Well, I love you, honey. I just can't tell you how much I love you because I got my mask on here. No, mankind my dogs has become, hate we, them. We, are, we are pathetic. We are, human beings are pathetic. We really are. Where is the faith in God? Where is the joy? Where is the praise? Where is the worship? So he says, I thought back when I was celebrating God. And then he's saying here in verse six, oh my God, my soul is cast down. No, he's at verse five, he's now challenging himself. This does sound like David because uh, he, he challenges cast down himself. On my soul? Yes. Why are you cast down on my soul? He's talking to himself. Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Come on self, what's your problem? Knock off the pity party. I used to be so depressed. I had such depression for days and days. My mother was so insensitive. She was, she was so cruel. She said, praise God. I don't want to praise God. I'm depressed. Go, she said, go swimming, Jerry. She also said, go swimming. <laughs> My mother was so insensitive. She told me to go swimming when I was feeling depressed. She had this idea that if I would swim somehow, it might release the endorphins that might somehow begin to lift my spirits. And then one time I was so sick, I was just about 13, and she, was, she came to me, she was so cruel. She said, honey, we're going to sing a hymn to God. And I said, mother, I am so sick, I can't do that. And so she began to sing, and mother was off key. And I said, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> I, I have to get her on key. And then I began to sing the hymn, and then I ran to the bathroom and came out of both ends. I hate to be so graphic about it. And I was instantly healed. And he went, Isaiah, to, he went to school the same day. And he was totally fine after Isaiah that. said, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you're in depression, if you're in sadness, get your eyes on the Lord. Praise is a magnifying glass it's going to put your focus on God instead of on yourself. So he says, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. There's where your answer comes. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Hope in God. Get your eyes off yourself. But frankly, we like to put our eyes on ourselves. And as my mother used to say, sometimes we enjoy poor health. If I'm sick, I'll get a little extra attention from you. I'm not trying to be light about sickness. But the doctors tell me that 80% of our illnesses are psychosomatic. Well, there's a good place to start right there to try to get your mind focused on the Lord and off of your illnesses. Well, also, you know, you get what you ask for, right? Oh, yeah. So What you say is what you get. Yeah, we're in Psalm 42, and David is now telling, and I'm sure this is David, he's saying in verse 5, come on now, self, get your eyes off yourself. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Here's your answer, hope in God. Oh, by the way, I did go swimming, and I came back and I felt just fine. Yeah. 
or I would run and get my eyes on nature. And you needed the endorphins. Bigger. I need those endorphins, that's right. Or I began to praise the Lord. I never knew a person who was depressed and angry and, and sullen who was busy praising the Lord. I love you, Lord, and I've missed my voice. I'm so miserable. No, when you begin to praise God, you get your eyes off yourself, you get your eyes on God, it lifts your spirits. It lifts your spirits. On the other hand, you can take a lot of medications. And I recommend it's all the mental terrible. health medications for those who are thin, because when you take health meds, you, won't you will get long. as fat as fat can be. And then you'll hear the song, my very first song I sang when I was two You're years old. You're too fat for me. I don't want her. You can have her. She's too fat for me. <laughs> so God bless you if you're on mental health meds and you look in the mirror and you're bigger today than yesterday. It's no miracle, sweetheart. You are getting yourself totally addicted and get off of it and get into the praise. Hallelujah. All right, he goes on to say in verse six now, read that, honey. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. Yep. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. So uh, my soul is cast down, I'm depressed, I'm down, and I'm beginning to look to the Lord. I'm remembering God and all the different places that I saw him. And uh, as I pulled out of my driveway yesterday, I was looking out at the Helderbergs. We can see the beautiful Helderberg Mountains from our home. And just thinking about the greatness of God and the wonderful psalm. I look unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. Says my health comes. Not from the hills, but from the one who health made those hills. This is God. And so now we're in Psalm 42 and verse uh, 9. He is now telling you how he is going to handle his depression how he's going to handle this discouragement. Verse 9. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? So he's talking to God. Uh, you, sometimes you think that God has forgotten you. And why don't you talk to him directly? Instead of complaining about God, say, God, I... It seems to me like you have forgotten me. I know that's not true, but that's how I feel. Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? My enemy is oppressing me, and uh, that's making me mourn. As with a breaking of my bones, my enemy reproach me. And uh, while they say to me all day long, where's your God? They're always challenging me, always criticizing Where me. Where is your God? Where is your God? And finally, in verse 11, he's giving you the solution for your depression, for your sadness, for your discouragement. And let's read that again. This is the, the uh, refrain, if you will, in this song. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So there's your solution. When you're down, when you're discouraged, when you're sad, why are you cast down, Oh, my soul, talk to yourself and say, what's your problem, self? What is your problem? Your problem, self, is self. The other day I was quiet. I wasn't depressed or anything, but I just was, because uh, I'm getting sick of this winter. And I came in here and I just walked all around the whole inside of the church for like half hour, just praising the Lord, doing a little march, getting exercise at the whole same time, free exercise, and praying. And afterwards, I was like, oh, man, I feel so good because I moved, right? I got moving, and I was praising, and moving, and I was praising. And so I killed two birds with one stone, prayed, Amen. and got exercise. But it helps, right? It Get makes your a eyes on the Lord. Yeah. Why are you cast down Move on my Move your body, soul? too. Why are you disquieted with me? Why are you upset? Why are you angry? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. He's the help of my countenance and my God. Another translation is my salvation. He's the help of my countenance. That's right. He makes your countenance look right. That's right. That's right. If and your the, countenance the is beautiful down. beautiful countenance. You'll have that smile, yeah. that peaceful look. That's right. If your countenance is down, you need to get a beauty treatment. You need to go into the mirror, the mirror of God's word, and see the Lord and what he's done for you. 
So put on that garment of praise for the spirit uh, of heaviness. Boy, does Charlotte Amen. put on it. Does she have a happy countenance? She does. She does. My one granddaughter, I have four grand, how many grand? I have five granddaughters, and they're all just precious. But this one, now she does have a temper. <laughs> Sometimes she's bad, I have to say. But when she's good, she's good. You know that poem, when she's bad, she's really bad. And when she's good, she's really good. But when she, she can change that countenance quick, you tell her, come on, put on a smile. And she will, she'll light up a whole room, won't she? <laughs> yeah, he sure will be. Absolutely. She's got Absolutely. a beautiful countenance when she wants to have one. So we need to get our eyes on the Lord, get our eyes off of ourselves, and um, let's ask the Lord to uh, help us to do that, honey, would you? Father, we thank you and praise you. We ask, Lord, excuse me, that you would help us to get our eyes off of ourselves and help us to get our eyes on you. Help us to focus on you. We have to shut down news, people, friends, family, anything, whatever it takes. Help us to get our eyes off of everything else, off of ourself, and on you. Help us to focus on you, Father. We ask that you'd bless each one of us with that now. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Until the next time, shalom. Shalom. Tonight, let's take our Bibles and turn in the Old Testament to the book of Psalms, Psalm 43. Prayer to God in time of trouble, or as I would like to say it, don't be discouraged. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Psalm 43, we're going to read it, and then we're going to talk about it verse by verse. Psalm 43 uh, in some of the Hebrew manuscripts is really connected to Psalm 42, uh, they're pretty much the same theme, and, uh, but we're going to just talk about Psalm 43 mostly in this segment, and uh, let's ask for the Lord to help us, shall we? Gracious Father, we come before you and we ask, Lord, that you would please help us to understand this scripture, uh, this psalm, and show us what you want us to learn out of this. We ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Please come and teach us. We ask these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen and amen. Now this psalm does not say that it's written by David, but to me it has David's fingerprints all over it. And in any event, the important thing is it was written by God, and he's written it for our sakes. And Kelly's going to read Psalm 43, and then we'll talk about it. Sure. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, for you are the God of my strength, why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring peace. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Amen. Beautiful little psalm about uh, prayer to God in time of trouble, or don't be discouraged. Vindicate me, verse 1. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Wow. Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. I wonder if that's on the hearts of uh, 40 million people tonight over in the Ukraine. Uh, I guess right? That, um, it's for it's, this time, uh, too. That's right. All scripture is profitable for rebuke, correction, that's and right. instruction in righteousness. That's right. We tell it as it is. I was mentioning before you had a chance to get here, Kelly had a beautiful prayer on Sunday for peace in uh, Ukraine. And she had about 40 people who really castigated her on Facebook, really took her to task, because there is no war in the Ukraine, they were saying, basically. And uh, so, uh, but there were about 150 who thought she did a great job. And we don't do it for it to be a man pleaser, but a God pleaser. But yeah, guys, there is a war. And uh, vindicate me, O oh God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Yeah, Russia's ungodly, no question about it. Uh, and if you wonder what's going on, uh, 
Do you know something? Putin does not know much about what's going on. You know who knows what's going on? Those who go to the Bible. Look at Ezekiel 30, 38 and 39. We were in that the other night, weren't we, honey? We were. Ezekiel 38 and 39, do you know about that? After the church is taken away, God is going to cause the nations to the north, Russia, probably Ukraine, Belarus, probably Lithuania, probably Estonia, to come down against Israel, be joined by Iran, by Libya, by Sudan, and southern Egypt, and they're going to come and attack Israel. And when the United, when the Russia broke up 10 years ago, I was thrilled, politically speaking, but I was also confused, biblically speaking, because that was weakening the power of the nation to the north, Gog and Magog. And so I say that Putin doesn't know what he's doing. He's just greedy and he wants Ukraine back. But he really is, and I'm not saying he's God's instrument. He certainly is wicked. But Russia is going to have to come together somehow, somewhere, to its former glory, to be there when the Lord takes the church out of the way and brings the northern power. And if you look at the map of Israel and you go straight north, what do you go through? You go through Ukraine on up into Russia. Eastern Ukraine especially there. And that's the part that's more pro-Russia. So I'm not saying that Putin is right. I think he's wicked and he's wrong and he's evil. I really do. But I do see God's hand in this. And if the Lord's coming in anywhere near our lifetime, Russia must become stronger than it is now. Do you know Russia is so weak economically, it is the 12th most powerful economic nation? It's not as powerful economically as Italy. It's not as powerful as Canada and so many others. It doesn't have that. So it has to become the most powerful. It has to become the, the, the power to come on in and to fulfill Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now, this may not be part of that plan, but... All things are working together according to God's plan. Pray for the Ukrainians, because they're this, this is a horrible time over there. And I speak from personal experience. I was rocketed every night, 2 a.m. in the morning, 6 a.m. in the morning. Rockets, people dying all around me for six long months in Vietnam. And I know it's a small thing compared to what they're going through over there in the Ukraine, but I know about rockets. I know about fear. I know about what it's like to lose loved ones. And we have and to friends. remember to pray for those people. That's right. And pray for those people that get out of the country yeah. and go into Hungary and uh, Poland, right? That's right. For those of you who watch Israel, they're going those to Israel. Those of you who are watching, saying there's no war in Ukraine, get your head out of the and pay attention to what's going on. All right. And we have an we Wake have up. we have a uh, responsibility to pray for those who are suffering. Yeah whether they're our religion, our race, our creed, whatever, when our brother or sister suffers, when someone suffers right. unjustly and you know, being hurt and bombed, we must continue to pray for those people, no matter where you're believing, whatever you're believing, why. I don't know why this is going on. I really yeah. don't. I've heard many things, but it's very sad. Well, let's get our eyes back on the Lord here. He says, Vindicate me, O God. Plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. That's not just Russia. That can be the, the person sleeping in the bed next to you at night. Hey. It can be your spouse. Not you, dear. Not you. <laughs> it can be your spouse. The deceitful and unjust person who's hurting you and, and uh, taking you to court and suing you for everything you're worth. For you are the God of my strength. I thought the CDC was. I thought the president was. I thought my new governor was. She's my salvation. No, you are the God of my strength. Not the CDC, not the FDA, not all these doctors who are telling us what to do with masks, no masks, etc., etc. God is the one who's my strength. God is. Now, he may use these people, and unfortunately, we have to work with them, but it's God who's our ultimate strength. But Lord, it seems like you're casting me off. Sometimes I feel like you're just leaving me alone. Why are you doing that? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? This certainly sounds like David. I can't imagine they don't pick that up as a psalm of David here. But he had so many enemies and he was mourning because of it. And when you and I are 
in oppression like these people are in, in Ukraine right now, they're going to wonder where God is. We've got to pray for their faith, among other things. Yes, food and shelter and etc. But pray for their faith in the Lord. Oh, send your, out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. That's going to be your answer. When you are in trouble, you need God's light and you need God's truth. You need the light of how to walk in a dark path. You need the truth of God's word to lead you. You have to make sure that you're not being led by man, by self, but by God. Jesus said he was the light of the world. He said also that you and I are the light of the world as we reflect Jesus to this world. Send out your light and send out your truth, Lord. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And Lord, I need your light and I need your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. That was, of course, Jerusalem, where they had the tabernacle at that time before the temple. Read verse 4, honey, would you? Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Well, there's your indication of who wrote this psalm. The harpist, the sweet psalmist of Israel, David. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. And when times are tough, when it's discouraged, get into praise, get into worship. He took his harp, he began to sing to the Lord, even as he had praised the Lord and taught Saul how to praise God and drove that evil spirit from King Saul. So you and I need to go into praise and worship when times get tough. When the times get tough, pray for the people in Ukraine that somehow they can know their God and go to him and somehow worship him in the time of extreme, extreme difficulty. I think I was just thinking about if they have a house can you imagine they have to leave their house, their home that they built? They leave their husbands, the men cannot leave. And, and they may, may never see, the, they can't, the men can't leave, all right? And then they're leaving everything in their homes. They ever going to get their property, the money they put in their property back? Who they, who's going to pay for them? The, go, the, the collapse in the whole government, the mortgage system, everything. They have a mortgage on their house. These people are living normal like, uh, lives like us. They leave their house, their furniture, their pets. They can't take their pets, their pictures, their belongings. They could have uh, paid a, on a house for 20-some years, everything gone. Because that government's going to, you think the government's going to say, oh, by the way, you owed, um, your house was worth $200,000, and we smashed it. We're going to give you the 200000 I doubt it. All right? You gotta, I mean, you, it blows your mind when you think of you. Start thinking about we're like, we, our mind can't even com, come up with what these people are going through. And, uh, it's beyond belief. Francis, uh, Premier Emmanuel Macron, Macron talked with uh, Putin today, and uh, after an hour and a half, he came away from that conversation saying it's going to get far worse. Because Putin is going to drive out Nazism from Ukraine. That's his motive. And that's what the, uh, the, the press says. And that's what the, what the press believes. And the, the people in Russia are believing it because the press told them. That's why I say, God, as far as the press, pick up, pick up your, your, your favorite news source and put a filter on it because I'll tell you, there's very little that's not biased. So if they're going to drive out, them, does that make sense? There's Nazism in there. So we're going to just bomb everything, get rid of all the women and children, nobody can have anything, chase them out of the countries. That's, that's, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Sure. Sure. If, if you want their land and, you, and you, you want all their possessions, that's just, that's been going on ever since time. It goes back to, to, uh, to Cain and Abel. Um, Abel, you, Abel was uh, blessed by God and his sacrifice was acceptable and Cain was jealous and so he didn't take uh, Abel's land. He Took his life. Took his life. And now we just, uh, I, if I want your land, I just take it. We, we've been doing that for the longest time. Same thing. spirit. Except the United States. We didn't take anybody's land, did we? Well, if you're an American Indians. Indian, you might just uh, disagree with that, <laughs> uh, that statement there. I'm being a little sarcastic tonight, but no. uh, the, the point is I'm trusting in God, not in man. Don't put your trust in man. Uh, finally, what's your solution in verse 5? Why are you cast down, 
O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So that's the real cure for depression, for discouragement, for uh, sorrow, is to look to God, to praise him in whatever way he leads you to do it. Uh, have the praise music on in your home uh, as much as you can in the car, whatever kind of praise you like. Uh, I was picking up an article tonight in, in preparation for this, and uh, it was a, a quote from Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the great uh, English uh, pastor uh, back at the turn of the yeah. century, going into the 20th century. Yes. And he said, my happiest moments mm -hmm. are when I am worshiping God. That's it. Really adoring the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. In that worship, I forget the cares of the church and everything else. To me, it is the nearest approach to what it will be in heaven. Wow. That's what he had to say. He, he got to heaven. to worship God. And when he finished his sermon, and he would be preaching in London to a crowd, uh, his church would average about 20,000 on a Sunday morning. And when he would finish, he would never stand at the door and shake hands. He would go back into his office and get on his knees before God, and he would worship and he would praise him. Wow. Because he realized, as Jesus did when he fed the 5,000, that you're most vulnerable right after you've been giving out. Yes. Uh, that's when the devil comes in remember and gives that, you a hard I, time. The first time, I think it was the first or second time I came up here with you. Do you remember what yeah, happened? Yeah, you were walloped. Yeah, you were walloped. Like really bad. I didn't know what my kids' names were. I went down there. I said, what just happened? And we thought that my sugar was low or like I had some, I don't know, I don't have any sugar problems, but we thought maybe that's what it was. So they ran downstairs and got some orange juice and they had brought it up. I was sitting there and I said, I can't remember my children's names or my grandchildren. Somebody was asking me my kids' names. I couldn't remember my aunt's name. I knew it was my aunt. And it was on it. I couldn't explain what happened. And we took the orange juice, and I still was not that great. I was kind of weird all day. But he said, I said, boy, I felt great. Like, I lost memory for some time. And we realized that I was hit spiritually. You know, it's been said that one hour in the pulpit is equivalent to an eight-hour day on the construction you gotta put site. You've got to prepare for protection. You know, for, well, let's get back to the Lord, and uh, I want to leave you with some scriptures. We've got a few minutes left over. Mm -hmm. uh, some scriptures to inspire us to get our eyes on Him. No matter what you're going through or others are going through, including in Ukraine, uh, let's look at uh, uh, these different uh, scriptures uh, Kelly's going to read where it's from and then just read the scripture. Sure. Psalm 9, verse 9. The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Psalm 9, 10. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Psalm 23. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear evil, for you are with me. I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Psalm 55, 22, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fail. Wow, that's Fall. great. Fall. Psalm 91, verse 1, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 27, 14, wait patiently for the Lord, be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Uh, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Wow, we need, Ooh, to, yeah. we need to take that one. Let's say that again, guys. Yeah. Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Amen. Well, the Bible says that one day all nations will bow to the Lord. That's right. That's right. Amen. Let's continue on. These are wonderful verses. Psalm 91, verse 2. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Psalm 37, 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Psalm 23, 3. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right path, bringing honor to his name. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, love is patient. 
Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. That's true love. Um, be patient, be kind, love one another, be, don't be jealous or boastful or proud. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, three things will last forever. Faith, love, or faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 7, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. In 2 Corinthians 4.18, so we don't look at the troubles, I like this, we don't look at the troubles we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen, for the things we see now will soon be gone, but things we cannot see will last forever. I like the new King, I like the King James mm, Version. I know you do. You know that though. Well, these are <laughs> verses to encourage your heart, put <laughs> your verses. eyes on the Lord. Next time you've got a pity party and you're, you're not feeling uh, uh, tip top, uh, Amen. and we all get there. Just look to the Lord. Begin to love Him, praise Him. Um, just whatever way you can find to get back to Him. That'll put things in perspective. That Aww. praise becomes a magnifying glass. Aww. Put it on the problem, the problem becomes too big. Put it on God and He becomes all you ever need. So close us in prayer, would you dare? Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank You for this wonderful words we've heard tonight and how to put our praise to You, Lord, how to put our thoughts on you. We thank you for all those that we've lifted up tonight, and we ask that you would bless all the people tonight who have listened and all those who will listen in the future. Help them, Lord, to really learn to praise you and trust you and to be able to lift, to be lifted up by you as they put their hope in you and read your word and study your word. We thank you and we praise your name, Father. Amen. by this moment